about that. So I tie it on the same hook on, on this clink hammer extreme because again, I like the, the body shape is, is as close as I'd want to get without going to a circle hook with or without a bead, depending on how you want to fish it. If you want to fish it as, a, as an emerger, keep it light. If you want to fish it as, a, as a, a deeper nymph, you can go that route. So the pattern itself is, is, is still fairly simple. I'm still using liquid lace. I'll use a little bit larger size, the medium size. And I'll use either a clear medium or the gray medium in the, in the liquid lace. Difference on the end result of the fly, but um, it drives me nuts. So thought I'd mention it. So I'm just using a black thread for the underbody. Again, I'm going to wind it all the way down and, uh, and cover the whole body with it. And then we'll start building the, uh, this pupa. And again, I'm going to take it as sort of close to that bend as I dare. Pyramid's gills in this phase are, are up at the head. But at the at, at the sort of the butt of the of the bug, there's a set of claspers, and so to emulate those, what I use is emu feathers. You could use synthetics like a poly yarn or something. Um, I, I prefer to use in a place where I want to have some movement in the fly. I prefer to use something that's natural, and it's I mean it's real small. It's not a, like a big deal, and I don't think there's a trout on earth that would actually notice that I used emu versus something else. But uh, it just it feels right to, to use something a little more a little more natural, a little more mobile. I'm just going to pinch it on and leave a little tuft sticking out by the butt here. And I'm going to tie it down as close as I dare to that bend. And of course, it's all going to stick to one side, but that's okay. I'm going to trim those butts off, and I want to cover that up with the black. I want that black underbody to be to be nice and smooth, and not to show any of the hook through. Now we're going to tie in some of the liquid lace down the back. Body thickness, a lot of coronamids, I always talk about you know, going thinner is better with coronamids. They do have some, some, some meat to them though, is, and the, when they get into that emergent phase particularly, they got a lot of body under there. And so, uh, you know, you don't have to be hook thin, you just want to be mindful that it's, that it's consistent and smooth. So again, I'm just tying this in running a stripe down the back all the way down and get it right up to where I've tied that stuff in. Now here's where the double back comes in. That that exoskeleton as it fills up with gas gets a, an iridescence to it, shimmers and glitters in the water. If you just put the liquid lace over top you'd get a little bit from the just from the plastic but not a great deal and attractors for coronamids always seem to work really well whether they're crystal flash under there or you know something like the uh, the frostbite coronamid bright colors so what I use is this pearl mylar so it goes blue to green to purple to pink to all kinds of colors and what I do is I tie it in just by folding it over my thread anchoring it right at the butt of the fly and then winding the thread all the way back up. Now I'm going to stop my thread sort of at this at the bend in this hook and it's kind of tough to see on camera. You can see there's a, a slight bend here on the shoulder of that of that clink hammer hook. What I'll do is take these this piece of flash, fold it right up over the body. It's a little trickier on a curved hook and tie it in with two wraps right up at the top just to hold it in place and then trim that off. So you can't see it in that side profile but as I turn the fly over you can see how right how much kick you get off that stuff and because there's no thread holding it down there's nothing to sort of in interrupt uh, the sort of the, the, the source of light coming off of it 
so you get nice reflection. Now we'll take this liquid lace and we'll start winding it up the body. If you pull it tighter, it lays closer to the body. If you let off the pressure, it thickens. So if you want, you can actually taper a body with this stuff just by adjusting the pressure you have on the hook as you wind it forward up to the head. That gives us a nice segmented body. I'll tie that off, just behind that bend again. Trim it off nice and close. And I'll put a couple of whips just to cinch everything down. So now you can see some of that segmentation on the body, the shine across the back, and how it goes dark underneath. So that gives you just the spine of the, uh, of the coronamid with the flash, just like on the naturals. For the wing case, brown raffia. I'll just cut a chunk of it. What I do is I'll fold it in half, fold it in half again. And what I want to do is tie it in over top of that space where I want the body. And I want to cover a good, a good portion of this space. I want to leave, however, a good space up behind this, this eye when I pull the wing case over. Pull that back. Now, dubbing underneath, something natural, something uh, that's not too contrast. You don't want to have the, the bodies on these things seem to match. The thorax matches the body, so. I use uh, synthetic seal or squirrel or something like that, but you want it to be fairly bulky. That thorax has got a lot of, a lot of goo to it, so. That's where all the good parts of the bug are when it hatches, so. Don't be afraid to put a, a, a nice thick thorax on underneath. The wing case will help to tie that down a bit too. Interestingly enough, the, the pupa at this state, if you look at a, a mosquito pupa, looks almost identical. But the mosquito pupa has a way bigger thorax. The thorax on a mosquito will come almost to halfway back on the critter. Otherwise, they look exactly the same. They are in the same family, so it's not such a, such a huge surprise. I'm going to fold that wing case forward over top. Tie it in behind the eye with one or two wraps. Put a half hitch in it because I'm nervous. And now the fun part. I'm going to split the Swiss straw by bunching it up over the eye, punching the bodkin through the eye so I get a fairly close to right in the middle split. And I'm going to separate it. So now I got all this stuff hanging out the sides. Take it, fold it back on both sides, and pinch it down underneath the fly. When you pinch it down, you bobbin. Put two or three wraps back over the top. Build up a little head on it. Neat as you dare. Trim that off. And then now that we've got this tucked in, we just trim it a 45 underneath. And the wing beds hang out underneath the, the chin of the fly. And lastly, we'll color off the top of the wing case to match the body. The wings almost always seem brown. I don't know what it is, but they almost always seem brown on every one I've seen. So then you've got a, a pattern there with defined wing cases on the bottom with the gills 